Just one big story, isn't it? Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Story Connection. I'm your host, Donna Wilberg. Today we are so pleased to have with us two very special people from Lodi. We have Fred and Judy Weibel. They are the owners of the Weibel Winery. And those of you out there who drink Weibel wine, we've got the hookup here. We have of all the information <laughs> coming from the people who are, you know, putting this out, this product out. So welcome. Thank you Thank for you. coming on the show today. Thank you, Donna. Um, First, we want to start out with you know the history because this is a three generation. Third operation? generation, yes. Okay. Yes, my uh, my grandfather emigrated to this country with uh, my dad. Uh, oh, shortly after uh, repeal, when my dad was 19, didn't know a bit of English. He had to learn English and American history before he could become a citizen. So. But anyway, they, they emigrated over to, uh, started out up in uh, Vancouver, Washington, in a partnership with some other Swiss folks, and uh, that lasted for a few years, and then the partnership dissolved, and my grandfather moved everyone down to San Francisco, started making sparkling wine uh, in San Francisco, and in 1945, they found the old Leland Stanford winery that was built by Governor Stanford uh, and operated by his brother Josiah. Mm -hmm. And we were there until uh, 1996. Uh, houses pushed us out and we relocated to Lodi and have been there ever since. So you grew up with with the grapes and, and picking the grapes and all. I'm, I'm thinking of, what is it, A Walk in the Clouds? where they, they talk about the, the story that took place at a winery. It just seems very romantic. What was it really like to grow up in, in the winery? Well, we were, we were really out in the country then because uh, it wasn't even Fremont anymore. It was mm -hmm. five townships and we were in the Mission San Jose district. And so uh, all the lights we saw at night were across the bay in Palo Alto and San Mateo County, but uh, it was great. I mean, we had uh, horses and got to ride a lot. Uh, when my feet could touch the pedals, I was able to drive <laughs> tractors and uh, pickups around the ranch. So, you know, I was driving when I was 12, 13 years old. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> In those days, though, it, it wasn't romantic like wineries are today. No. Mm -hmm. A lot it, of work. It was a lot of work. Well, so I, le I learned how to work. Okay. Yeah. So you got out there and picked the grapes and... I did a little bit of everything when I was old enough to... Uh, pick up a broom I'd sweep in the in the warehouse mm -hmm. uh, we used to before capsules came along we used to have uh, sheets of foil and I'd have to we'd take and wrap the foil and fold it over on the champagne bottles and crimp it and, oh my goodness you know, and I also saw very that very labor intensive you hand labeled your bottles back then yes yeah wow. yeah just a, a little glue machine to put glue on the label and then uh -huh. hand label yeah so how have things kind of transcended from then to now? Then to now? Well, now we, uh, we have a state-of-the-art bottling machine uh, that uh, you know, fills the bottles and corks the bottles at the same time. Uh, then they get a wire hood. They go through a warming machine to, to get the condensation off. Because when we bottle it, the uh, sparkling wine, it's about 32 to 34 degrees. So it's very cold, and the, the bottles are... Uh, sweat and they're wet so mm -hmm. goes from there gets a capsule and goes into an automatic rotary uh, labeling machine that puts the front back and neck label on and off to the case packer 
And I'm betcha that makes you really happy that the machines are doing it. Absolutely. Wow. <laughs> wow. When the, the line stops, he gets out of his chair. <laughs> <laughs> That's super. Yeah. We have, um, I just lost my train of thought. You've got different kinds of, of wine, so mm -hmm. where do you get your grapes? How do well, you, the, how does it work? The grapes for our table wines uh, come from Mendocino County. We started purchasing vineyards in Mendocino County in about 1968. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we, we have a fair amount of vineyard up there. We make the wine up there, bring it down and, and bottle it. And then our sparkling wine, uh, uh, we have our sparkling wine base wine made here in the valley and, uh, and brought in uh, for the sparkling wine production. Okay, now you've got fruit infused sparkling right. wines, which I absolutely love. How are those made? How, how do you get that fruity flavor? Well, we, we have to use uh, 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 government approved natural flavors, mm -hmm. no artificial. And uh, when the uh, champagne or sparkling wine is finished fermenting, uh, we add what we call our dosage and that's uh, a little sugar, acid to balance it, and then any flavor that we want to put in. And then we mix it and uh, chill it, and it's filtered and uh, goes into the bottling tanks and is bottled. Oh, and then into the glasses. Yeah. Oh, it's exciting. So whose passion was it to start producing sparkling wines? Your, your grandfather? Actually, my grandfather, Okay. Yes. Now, is this something that that he started out being interested in, or is this something that well, he just actually, sort of... When, when he was in Switzerland, he uh, made a lot of fruit and berry wines and a lot of eau de vies like uh, Williams Pear and Kirschwasser, Prunel, the, the clear uh, liquors. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Do they still make those? <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. Oh, yes, they, they still make a lot of those. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. Okay, so is there a particular place um, that growing is, is this valley or, or where you grow your grapes? Or is that an ideal situation for you? Uh, uh, we like Mendocino County because mm -hmm. we have several, several different microclimates up there. So, uh, you know, things that do well in a, a cooler climate uh, will we'll plant there. And then, uh, of course, if the... Uh, Soil is, uh, you know, suitable for, you know, Cabernet. We'll plant Cabernet there. It's, uh, you know, it's pretty much a... Yeah. Are you being affected by the drought? Yes. Oh, what yes. does that do to the grapes? Well, it's, uh, it, we're limited as to the amount of water that mm. uh, we can use. In fact, last year we had to hold off uh, a replant program and, and this year built a, uh, a pit pond to hold water so that we'd have water to water the young vines. Well, more work. More work. Yeah. More work, more money. <laughs> <laughs> Judy, now you've redecorated, or you decorated, the well, tasting room. Yes. We, Ta talk about that. Well, we decided to open a tasting room in Lodi mm -hmm. about a year and a half ago. We had one up in Mendocino County, but it was small and not located in a great spot. So everybody wanted to know, where can we get your wines? So we looked and we found the perfect location on School Street, right in the heart of downtown Stockton. Lodi. I mean, I'm sorry, <laughs> Lodi. Um, we live in Stockton. Um, it's, it has the farmer's market every mm -hmm. Thursday in the, during the season. It's the hot spot for everything. So I decided I wanted to decorate it a little different than most wineries. And so we went back in time to the 1940s when Fred's grandfather started the winery. So it's decorated with older furniture. Zsa, Zsa Gabor used to represent us oh. with green Hungarian. And we have pictures of her and of Fred's father with her. And um, we have old music playing when it's not real crowded, you can hear it. But it's been a destination. We have uh, the old original uh, barrel bar mm -hmm. um, from a tasting room in Fremont, but then we moderned up the counter and we have a mannequin in the window that kind of represents us and she's my Barbie doll I change <laughs> her all the time and um, so I have fun with the winery I'm, I'm not involved in all the headaches yeah. I just like the the good part 
Well, it's it's a lovely place, and you have all kinds of events that mm -hmm. you oh. you invite people to as yes. well, don't you? Yes, we okay. have. You're very involved with the community. It's, oh. It seems mm -hmm. always. There's never you know a weekend. A quiet weekend is wonderful. Yeah. But we we give back a lot. Fred especially is. He believes in that giving back, and he does so much for so many, and and I try too, but it's hard to keep up with, <laughs> just keeping up with him. Um, but well, it is, it's it's a nice thing to do. Yeah. Now, you do you have a lot of family help? Are you still? Is there a lot of family still involved uh, with the? My the my cousin. Uh, is my partner uh, in the vineyard and has a piece of the winery and then uh, our son Bob is uh, working in the winery also. You know that's actually a science and an art to yeah. produce wines that are just so beautiful and yeah. so uh, just people just really are looking for that certain taste and that certain body and everything and you're a, an award winner you've, you've won many awards. Yes we have. So yeah. What is this just your learning from you know being a child and growing up in this atmosphere, or is there there's something that you had to uh, knowledge that you had to accumulate to keep this going? Yeah, pretty much for me, it was growing up in it. I learned from uh, my uncle, who was our winemaker for many years, and uh, my grandfather, uh, who was excellent at blending, and and my dad, he was he was also a uh, good blender and. Uh, taster so yeah we uh, it looks you know, like, yeah. did it did it in the family <laughs> <laughs> and still it's, it's a lot of work how many varieties do you have how many types of wines do you make oh goodness we have in the table wines we have about uh, six different varieties and then of course we have all the sparkling wines and, and the uh, flavored sparkling wines and what's the most popular well for us the sparkling wine is the most popular and uh, and, and, the and really, the, the flavors are really uh, they're really very popular. Now, are, do you ever introduce new things? Um, well, we just recently uh, uh, introduced the peach mango flavor, which has gone over very well in the tasting room. Yeah. It looks it yeah. looks delicious. And then this past uh, February, we uh, released our Patriot uh, red blend, and. Uh, we we decided we wanted to do something to to give back and mm -hmm. uh, you know we feel our government does not do much for veterans mm -hmm. and so we uh, we decided we'd come up with this blend and we we're donating two dollars a bottle uh, to two different veteran charities one of them's a uh, the the Operation Wounded Mind mm -hmm. and the other's the Veterans Sportsmen's Alliance uh, and so we uh, we had representatives come down at our release party and, and presented each of them with a check for six thousand dollars because there were uh, 500 only 500 cases of this produced oh my goodness and uh, two wonderful young men uh, one a Navy SEAL and, mm -hmm. and the other a, a Congressional Medal of Honor winner so, or recipient oh. and, and they were shocked they just yeah. thought they were coming down to just join us in because they thought it was such a nice idea that we mm -hmm. had the label and had no idea they were getting a check and uh, there were profanities <laughs> <laughs> spoken when when they saw the check and it was made out to them and um, so they were very oh. very grateful and it made what the a, day what a very thing to I mean, do. you know I can tear yeah. up too it was a wonderful morning yeah it was oh, afternoon that's just Fabulous that you do that. So, is this going to be an ongoing thing, or you yes. just okay? In fact, we've got the next vintage in the bottle, uh, aging right now. Oh, that's wonderful. Now, did you serve? Did you serve in the military? I I, uh, I was in the National Guard years ago. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is just something that you know is close to your heart, and yeah. and you just being uh, a citizen, of being a yeah. United States. I mean, living here. Yeah. And seeing what. The, the veterans have gone through. Yeah. yeah. Just is. And last this past June, I uh, went with a group on an honor flight to Washington D.C. and es we escorted World War II and Korean War vets to Washington D.C. and took them to all the monuments. And wow. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> I know. He, was, he, he had to stay within an arm's I, reach of his veteran the whole time. Yeah, uh -huh. I, I, I had uh, many moments on that trip where my eyes watered. So. Oh, what a, <laughs> what a wonderful thing to do. Such, such a way to give back. You know, and we're going to talk about other ways that you give give back um, after we give our information in a couple minutes. Um, so the Patriot wine is it on the shelves everywhere? Is it's, it? It's available through our tasting room uh -huh. and online. Okay, all right. Well, we're going to give a shout out because you know people want to support. You know the veterans. This is a wonderful way to do it. You're you know getting something and giving something at the same time. And then, okay, so it's a red. What kind of red? It's a red blend. There's uh, uh, Petite Syrah, Carrigan Ann, uh, Zinfandel, a little Merlot. Mm. It, it really made a nice, nice blend. Yeah. Well, it's it's like the the Armed Forces. It's a nice yeah. blend too. Yeah, that's right. And there's a nice message on the back too. Do you want to read it? It's too long to read, I think, <laughs> for the time that we have, but. Um, uh, it's just a, a Thomas Jefferson once said, uh, Patriam, patriotism is not a short frenzied burst of emotion, but the long and steady dedication of a lifetime, the wine reflects our lifelong devotion to the Oh my gosh, I'm sorry, my eyes, <laughs> this is small print, do you remember? Finish. Oh. The lifelong devotion to those who protect our freedom and to pursue a passion. Oh, that's yeah. beautiful. So it's a beautiful bottle all yeah. the way around. Oh, absolutely. Inside and out. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, so we've we've covered just about everything about the winery itself. Are you know is the production so down? Do you are you expanding? What is what no, is we, your? We produce all year round. Being in the sparkling wine business, we're continually producing, mm -hmm. and, and then of course during harvest we produce our uh, our table wines. But uh, we're always always going and uh, uh, bringing new clients on. We do a lot of private label as well as our branded goods and a lot of co-packing for other wineries. Uh, they'll send their wine in and have us ferment it into sparkling wine for them. And yeah, so we're yeah. pretty, pretty diversified. So how does that, how does that work? You, you grow the grapes, you make the wine, and then somebody comes in and, and puts their label on, is that? Well, uh, with our own, we grow the grapes and, mm -hmm. and, and bottle our own wine. And then uh, we also bring the base wine in for the sparkling wine, produce mm -hmm. it. And we'll we'll put uh, someone else's label on. We'll file all the necessary paperwork so that uh, it's a legal legal package and people know where it was bottled. And then uh, we'll also have folks that will make their own wine and send it into us, and we'll put it in our tanks, ferment it, and bottle it, and then uh, ship it back to them. Wow, that's incredible. So it's a how big many circle? I didn't see. Is there a lot? Of, where's your your tanks? Where are all your in Lodi? Okay. Yeah, we're we're. I didn't get in the back. I was just in the <laughs> front of the. I didn't get to see the back. So uh, there there must be. Right. Well, the the oh. uh, the winery is about uh, two miles from where the tasting room is. Okay. Two miles from where the tasting room. Okay. Um, what else can I ask you? Because you've given me so much information. What is your favorite? What do you What do you like to drink? What do you the most proud of? Well, I, I mean, I like really this, this Patriot blend is wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, we had an 09 Cabernet that was just fantastic, and the the, uh, the 12 that's out now has really come around nicely, make a nice Zinfandel. And me, <laughs> I like um, I like the Mendocino Brut, our mm -hmm. champagne, without the flavors, personally, but the flavors are the most popular. Yeah. And I like the Zinfandel, okay. the reds, yeah. but the Chardonnay's not bad either. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to know a lot of, not just what you like, but you know, what other people are going to be wanting as well. There's a lot to know in this business. Right. Well, uh, you know, if, if we, as winemakers, made wine that we truly like that we, we would not sell a lot of wine <laughs> yes we you have to make it make things for for other people's tastes yeah 
and 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 with like with the flavors, uh, they're a little on the sweet side, and the American palate is pretty much a sweet. We, we haven't got off the uh, the sweet peat, sweet pink fruity wine mm -hmm. kick. Yeah. Yeah. So is but there? But that leads people to drier wines because they start there and then they move to drier wines. Is there a uh, particular uh, grape that your grandfather? started with that was from his his homeland that he wanted to uh, grow here did was that successful well, actually when he came over they he brought uh, Chardonnay and Pinot Noir vines okay now did they differ from he, from, he came from Switzerland is that? he came from Switzerland okay so he came from Switzerland is there a difference between the vines there and, and perhaps the vines in Italy well the 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 vines here pretty much are uh, European because when Phylloxera wiped our vineyards out at the yeah, last uh, at the turn early in this uh, century, they had to bring budwood over. They had brought rootstock and budwood over here to mm -hmm. uh, recreate the vineyards, and, and they found that the Saint George uh, variety that was uh, indigenous here uh, was resistant to the uh, Phylloxera. It, because the, the Native American grape is really uh, 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 Labrosca, like Welsh's grape juice, mm -hmm. uh, has that kind of funny taste. Okay, so there's there's so much to this. I'm I'm just fascinated with what you're saying yeah. because, you know, no, it, just to pick up a bottle, you go, oh, you know, that looks good, that tastes good, but to know everything that goes along with it, blending it and growing the grapes and the soil and stuff like that, that's just such an art. Wow. So, who are you passing the baton to on, on all this, your knowledge? <laughs> He's laughing. <laughs> I knew I'd make you laugh. <laughs> uh, well, we're, we're trying to keep it in the family. Uh-huh. Okay. That's, that's uh, sometimes can be a difficult yeah. thing with everything that's, that's changing. Right. People are, um, you know, things are just different. Mm -hmm. Everybody has different interests. Yeah. So... So how much uh, input do you have in uh, the tasting, you know, when you go in and say, you know, I really, you know, it needs this or that? Um, I don't have a good palate. Okay. And so that's what, that's what's hard. But I know what I, and, and again, what I like isn't well, what right now, most people would, would really, you know, the, the majority of the people may not want. But um, I, I know the almond is our biggest seller, mm -hmm. the champagne, the sparkling. And uh, for people that have nut allergies that you're hearing about right and left with peanut butter and mm -hmm. children, um, what we, the natural flavoring that we put in it does not affect people with allergies. Well, so it's really kind of, it is good to know because yeah. a lot of people think I can't try that. I'm, I'm gonna yeah. Yeah. break out in hives or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good to know. So everybody out there who has a nut allergy, um, this is your friend. Yeah. Why well, that's, that's that's no, the peach not this one, but the yeah. the almond, the almond, the almond yes. um, sparkling wine. Yeah. We have five flavors, six flavors now. So, oh my goodness! Pomegranate, peach, citron, raspberry, and mango. Peach, mango. peach mango. Is that five? Yeah. And almond. Okay. Yes. Yeah. They're lovely. Well, let's give some information how people can get in touch with you. Well, um, our tasting room is open seven days a week. Uh, it, uh, it, we have everything that we make there. You can um, order through um, online, uh, through uh, whitebell.com. Uh, we have a wonderful wine club. Our wine club is, it, it costs nothing to join. It costs nothing to get out. You can choose what you want if you don't want what we've just released. Um, and there's activities. We have wonderful parties twice a year. And um, it's uh, it's growing by leaps and bounds. So. Well, you can people can check out your event calendar, yes. see what you have coming mm -hmm. up. Oh yeah, we've yeah. got lots of things going all the time. Good. All right. Well, let's give some information about the Story Connection. The Story Connection airs the second and fourth Thursday at 9:30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Our companion show, Paranormal Connection airs the first and third Thursdays of each month. 
Each episode repeats the following Friday at 1.30 p.m. and Saturday at 5.30 a.m. Watch these programs online at the same airtimes by going to accesssacramento.org and clicking Watch 17. In the Sacramento region, you can see us on Comcast Channel 17 and on AT&T Channel 99. You can find previously aired shows on the Story Connection YouTube channel. For information on upcoming shows and previous Story Connection guests, go to storyconnectiontv.blogspot.com. You can contact us at storyconnectiontv at gmail.com. And don't forget, find us on Facebook. Become a friend and become a fan. So, Fred, um, we were talking before the show, mm -hmm. and you were you were sharing uh, this organization you belong to, Angel Flight. Mm -hmm. Would you please tell our audience about what it is you do? Okay. Well, I'm, I'm a pilot. I've been a pilot since 1972, and uh, several years ago I joined Angel Flight, which uh, is Angel Flight West, which is an organization that transports folks that need to get to and from treatment, uh, all non-emergency. Uh, or caregivers that need to go home to take care of business that are uh, with a loved one that's undergoing a long-term uh, transplant or procedure at, say, Stanford. Mm. Um, and I also uh, have flown dogs and cats that needed to get to uh, some place where they would be safe and would be adopted out. And so I've taken them from the Bay Area up to Bellingham, Washington, and. Uh, but Oregon and an Idaho. That's not Angel yes. Flight. That's Wings of Rescue. Oh, so, so, I, <laughs> so I have two two organizations. Yes, some uh, people, some two organizations dogs. that I help out. And, uh, well, I could course, see your wings. Yeah. He yeah. has twenty five animals in the plane at, yeah. at one time. Oh my goodness! But, so, uh, like, when there's areas that have floods and they need they need you know rescues for so many animals. Do you, do you get involved in that? Well, it's everything I do is through the, the organization okay. of Wings, and Resc okay. Wings of Rescue. And then, of course, with Angel Flight, I go through Angel Flight West in Santa Monica. I can't believe it, but we're out of time. <laughs> it always happens. But thank you so much for sharing your stories, and um, thank you for being such wonderful human beings. You, well, well, you two you are so us. inspiring. And uh, everybody, check out the Y-Bell Winery in Lodi. You're going to have a great time. They've got some great wines and sparkling wines and, you know, party hardy. Check out their website. You know, all the events are, are online and everything, so um, you can participate in some of their wonderful uh, gatherings. So, And thank you again to my wonderful crew who comes in and volunteers their time to get this show on the road. So we really appreciate them as well. And when somebody walks up and says, what's your story? You know, I hope you're ready because you just might end up on the show. All right. With that, Thank we're going to say goodbye. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you.